Hello everybody, welcome to uh, Digital Illustration and Storytelling with Jeff Wilson. So this is our January 2022 edition. So we're gonna be uh, having this once a month on uh, Saturdays. And then uh, also in terms of, um, you know, in person, we're gonna have the ability to go uh, uh, in person um, for the for the sessions as well uh, in uh, in the library. So we're gonna have those Saturday morning uh, adventures in digital arts uh, programs and uh, lot, lots more information on that. But thank you for joining us. Uh, really uh, appreciate everyone joining us and and sharing in this in this project. Uh, and in terms of you're here, you're joining us. You can rewatch this after it gets recorded here. So you know you can you can enjoy, you can follow along, you can try things, and then you can go back and you can try some more. So uh, don't feel that you you know you have to quickly you can you can sometimes just sit back and, and uh, absorb some of the information that Jeff's going to share with us. So really really excited to be able to do this. So um, yeah, just in terms of the the uh, application. So we have uh, so Jeff Wilson, local animator. If you haven't joined us this is your first time, welcome. Uh, so he'll be taking us through this journey. So we have uh, six months of uh, scheduled Saturdays uh, for Jeff to do this uh, this online session. So really uh, great to have that. So he's a uh, uh, award-winning uh, local cartoonist here uh, based in the South Georgian Bay uh, region so you'll see his uh, his comics around and, and uh, himself around too so really happy to have him here and uh, in terms of the software we're using we have the Procreate software so this is lo a low-cost app that you can get on the iPad or iPhone and you know the great thing is we have iPads available at all our uh, uh, project partners so again we have the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library, and I also want to thank the Canada Council for the Arts for making this, uh, uh, the, for the funding for this project. So in terms of the iPads, you can access these at the library partners. So Wasaga Beach, we have one coming soon. We're, I think we're just a couple weeks away, but the other two libraries have iPads with the Procreate software and Apple Pencils that you can just go take out. So if you're a member at any of these libraries, you can take out this, uh, this uh, technology the iPad and Apple Pencil, and then you can rewatch and, and try things out then. So really uh, want to give access to everyone. So don't worry if you don't have this at home, you can just watch this session and you can go take out an iPad and Apple Pencil and Procreate. Uh, so that's the great news. So just without any further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Jeff and he's going to take it from here. Here we go. Here's Jeff. Okay, thanks again, Tom, and welcome everybody again to another exciting session, I hope, uh, for you, and it's going to be um, exciting for me. It always is. I always enjoy uh, doing the classes uh, here, and today, um, I am I had the idea for, the, for today's concept being uh, drawing really big things uh, versus really small things. Now, the idea being is that you can, uh, we're, we're in a fantasy world as cartoonists, so we can take this another step and we can uh, change things. Like I had have a little sketch here that I've got in our drawing that I'm doing here. So we've got this um, on the right side of our picture. I've got this ant who's kind of a, you know, this, this is like a, like if you're looking really close at an ant. Now ants are very small compared to people. And um, this would be, and then I've got a picture of the globe, the world. <laughs> right beside him here, and it's very small. So th this is, to look at this, it's kind of a funny uh, idea right off the bat because you've got this very um, big earth and a very, uh, sorry, very small, big uh, big ant. See, see, that's where it's funny right there because I've already mixed up. Um, a very large ant, or is it a very small earth? Uh, that's, that's the question here. So th it makes it a very funny looking drawing. And uh, you can do other things too. That, that was my first idea was to, how, wouldn't that be funny to have a very small earth beside an ant looking at it like, so this is the earth, the earth we live on, uh, you know, so, sort of a scale model of it. So we can take this down. Let's, let's try to create something else. So what else is very small that we could draw and, and have fun with it? So the, the idea could be for a cartoon where the earth is really shrunk and small to the size of an ant or the ant has grown very large to be the size of the earth. So you could it could create a lot of fun story ideas. Just uh, just saying, it's just a thought that you could have uh, creating cartoons. Another thing, what could be small? It could be a thumbtack uh, or, or just a tack, just a small tack here. Let's draw a thumbtack per se and... Uh, And we'll have the spike in the thumbtack here. 
And something very large might be um, an elephant. Let's draw an elephant here that would be, in comparison to the thumbtack, quite a bit smaller. So to draw elephants, I tend to do a like, um, like a dome, basically, and then add the an oval here. And then add the trunk, of course. So there we go. We've got a We're not going to put a lot of details in this. We're just going to show that this is an elephant. So to have an elephant, you need to have very thick, heavy feet, thicker at the back, maybe a bigger one, and then a kind of a tail here at the back. So this is kind of another twist on that idea. You get this great big thumbtack and this, this tiny elephant um, in this picture. And it's usually the opposite. In, in normally, um, if you saw an elephant, uh, well, let's go back to our first drawing. Let's look at it this way. If you saw an ant, you wouldn't see the same view of the earth <laughs> that you're seeing now. If you saw the view of the earth, uh, you couldn't even see a human being. So imagine you wouldn't see an ant at all. So there you go. It's, it's just that you're seeing two things together in one image that you wouldn't normally see together. So that, that's the fun of the exercise, is to draw things that wouldn't normally be in the same picture. They'd, they'd be so, one would be so outsized, the other wouldn't even be seen. So there's there's another one, the elephant and the uh, and the thumbtack. Let's create another one now, too, and just, uh, just to keep having fun with this. Uh, what would be um, something small? It could be a, um, oh... Uh, an amoeba, like a, a microscopic creature, could be like an amoeba or a, um, a paramecium. An amoeba, that's a, a scientific term for, um, for a one-celled creature. So uh, if we're drawing that, let's just make our pen size a little thicker here, just so we can get a... So it, it's kind of an unusual body here, and then it has the center. And of the amoeba, and then you might have little things here throughout the body. <laughs> and then, so that's your amoeba. And I think I'm just going to use my uh, arrow tool here at the top and make it even bigger. And then, and what would be a big thing? Well, you could have a dinosaur, like a big brontosaurus or something. Let's do a, a big brontosaurus and using our our arch uh, theory with the, the big body here. We could have a big brontosaurus here. And we can make a cartoon of it. We can almost use the same legs as the elephant had. And then, of course, he would have a long, slithering tail like a, like a brontosaurus would. Maybe looking at, at this amoeba. So there you go. We've got another drawing that has uh, two things that we, you would not necessarily see together. And you could create little jokes for this. You could, um, I guess, the, the it's, I'm almost it's almost too um, too much fun to even get started at it. But this could be a joke saying. Um, uh, Why would it be bigger? So let's, for example, let's say the Piranosaurus is in its normal environment. So we could draw like a kind of a Stone Age look here with the earth kind of burnt up here. So it would be a, let's say the Piranosaurus is in his environment and the, me, the amoeba isn't. And uh, the amoeba is uh, here saying, um, <laughs> what could he say? He could say, uh, we're... I'm, I'm finished the smorgasbord. Where do I pay? <laughs> okay. Let's have him say that. And it would exp what we're doing is we're writing something because we are helping the reader see see a way to make sense of what we're seeing. This very nonsensical image, but 
in a way we're helping the reader to see it and hoping hopefully giving giving them a laugh too i'm finishing let's see that not the smorgasbord the uh, um oh <laughs> the buffet so uh buffets are basically quite often all you can eat uh and they sell you uh a, you buy it for so much, uh, so many dollars, and you get to eat all the food that's available. Um, where is where is the cash out? That could be a punchline for that one. That's just the di the, the dinosaur in his regular environment, and the amoeba in not in his in kind of uh, unusual environment but and that little punchline ex describes how we could make sense of that okay so let's just switch gears here okay let's take out the background here let's put it in the amoebas uh background here let's say there are other other life forms other dino um, let's say one cell life forms here And it's it, you don't have to be too fancy. You can you can do a little detail if you know science. You can do this sort of thing. You could put a couple of one cell beings here and another one here, and and then the, the dinosaur could be saying, um, "Why why is a dinosaur in a, in a microscopic world?" He could be saying. Um, if you know science, you'd know a bit about dinosaurs. So that, that's another thing to make it work too, is knowing a bit about uh, the, the subject matter, do a little bit of research. You've got the internet, the greatest research tool ever uh, invented, ever allowed to for man to access. Uh, you could just, or you could go to a local library, which who are our partners here, very proud to have them as our partners, the, the Wasaka Beach Library, the Blue Mountains Library, and the Collingwood Library, who are, we're very proud to uh, represent here. And you could find out what does a dinosaur have that might be different from an amoeba. Well, the dinosaurs no longer exist. And uh, uh, maybe this is a dinosaur that lost his way somewhere in time. And he could be saying... Um, Excuse me, sir. Trying to find his way back to to where he came from. Which way to I have to check the spelling on that, but which uh, the Cretaceous period was a was a, a period uh, in time. Re research that one. I think uh, I'm just going to take my cell phone out here because I can research that one. So the dinosaurs. Are so right now. It could, let's just take that Cretaceous period out. All of that is going to go out. So I would have been totally wrong here. I'm glad I checked my facts on this. Uh, the Mesozoic era would have been when the dinosaurs were existing on the Earth. To the Mesozoic Okay, so it's not a knee slapper, but it is. It, it does tell the story. The dinosaur, because he's lost. He's lost. He's um, which way to the Mesozoic era? That was the age in which the dinosaurs lived. So there you go. So that's an idea that uh, you could have a lot of fun with that. And once you have your your main idea that you want to use, you can take take that further and uh, have a lot of fun with it. So let's take take that one. Let's go back to this one of the the ant and the earth, which I think is. Really, I enjoyed drawing the ant character there. And um, just wanted to talk a bit about 
about the eyes on characters and making them look big and small. And um, I'm going to create a new layer here. And we're just going to draw two characters. And we're going to uh, draw them in, in different proportions. So let's take a uh, let's take a really simple one, a teddy bear here. And I'm just going to um, teddy bear here. So let's imagine we're drawing a teddy bear that is really large. So we would have a a smaller head than the body. We could have a really large body here. And remember the theory with the uh, the elephant and the dinosaurs is kind of a arch look to it. And I think I'd even make that head even smaller than that. And then we're going to here, we're going to do a typical teddy bear, a typical size of a teddy bear with kind of an oval head. And... Um, A couple of uh, fluffy legs here and just a couple of arms stick out here and of course the teddy bear ears and a couple of eyes here so there we go so that's what it, what we're drawing on the right side here is what a teddy bear would normally look like i'm even going to make thicken that line a bit more just to give it a little more uh impact here I'm sketching right now. So what I use is I, I kind of sketch out, I feel out the, the way I want the, um, the drawing to look. So that's your typical teddy bear. This is what most teddy bears would look like. On the left side, we're drawing a teddy bear, a massive teddy bear. Maybe the biggest teddy bear in the world here. Okay, and that's and why is it big? Because we've made the proportions big, and we can we can sort of keep the face about the same. Have a maybe give him a little more of a unhappy look here. Okay, maybe a more menacing teddy bear look. But this is this is a king of all teddy bears. He's big, and the reason is because we changed the proportions for the teddy bear to be really large in the body, really especially heavy in the legs, and um, maybe not so big in the arms, but it's certainly big in the body here. The big, thicker body. And uh, compared to the little teddy bear, so that's that's a little bit of fun we had uh, doing that body. And I think now, now that we've done that, let's create, um, do some nice, finish this off a bit with some nice line work. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer here, and uh, I'm going to change my pen tool here in the Procreate uh brush library to the inking tool which is the third one in the menu and down to the studio pen which is a beautiful which i prefer for myself but you can use a many many other ones you can use the marker tool or the um dry ink tool which is a lot of fun but the studio pen is so beautiful and it does a great job there's oh yeah there's a lot of choices of mercury which gives you kind of a liquid line it's really interesting too some of these others have a bit of texture in it oh the syrup one too has a bit of a liquid line which i like as well but my preference again is the studio pen it just gives me such a nice clean flowing uh, nice i can change the thickness to light or dark so i'm going to use that i'm going to use the black tool here in the uh in one of my palettes here and I'm going to just damp that down a bit, damp the thickness down on the left side. Uh, maybe I'll keep it fairly thick. 
and do a, a, a nice outline here on this new layer. And we can do a nice thick outline. Let me just turn the camera over to the uh, to the tablet here. We can sort of see me doing this. This is uh, ho hopefully helpful to you to do this on, on the ears. Let's do the ears outlines first, and then uh, do all the out outlining first, and then we can add the uh, details later. A little finer um, things. Okay, let's just get that outline here first. getting that outline just nice and crisp. And then here in the bottom part, we can just kind of take it up. We don't have to put in a lot of detail there, but I think we probably would do that part. Let's go to our regular size teddy bear. And we'll just basically do the same thing here. We're going to um, give him a outline here. Now you notice the eyes, I just have black line eyes. And the reason I did that is because uh, it's a very simple character. You just need the black lines. Now, if, you've, if you're drawing your teddy bear character again and again, you, um, you want to have him move his eyes, basically. And you notice how I'm tr keeping the, the thicknesses on the bottom part a little heavier than I have in the top part. And that's just um, showing the, it's just basically a very subtle show of the uh, source of light. It's, it's not showing the total story, but it is indicating that what's above is well lit and what's below is not as well lit. So that's just a bit of, it's kind of a cartoonish short, shorthand, I guess. I've always liked to draw that way where, uh, a little, a little thicker on the bottom, a little lighter on the top. Just, just to give that indication. And it gives a little bit of uh, texture to it in a way, too. It's a very subtle thing, but it's, it works for me. Okay, so once we have that done, we can basically take away that rough layer that we had here. And now we've got our, our nice solid outline. And for our bear on the left side, we can just basically take the uh, light line and create a bit of, uh, see how nice that light line looks against that nice thick dark line? And we can do that here in the face and, and the ears, the teddy ears here. And uh, we'll just create a new layer, and we're going to color this in. This should be a lot of fun to do this. Our big and little teddies. Move that in, and I'm just going to change the color now to one of my um, color palettes. So teddy bears are brown. I think I would make my teddy bear nice, nice light sandy brown here. Just going to try that. And in my pen tool, I'm going to uh, take my textures. What would be a good texture for a teddy bear? Uh, let's see here. I might even try one of these kind of nice uh, charcoal charcoal tools here and try to try to build a nice line here with it. Oh, too big of a brush here. So we have to play with the brush a bit, get it uh, to work a bit. 
So there you go. You, if you have a little fill in with a texture to it, it, it just looks great. You don't have to do right to the outside of the line. It can almost go there, but it doesn't have to. And if you if you want to have a little more power in the in where it's going, and you don't need as much texture, you can just uh, take amp that down a bit. I think what I'm going to do is start here by filling in the center part of Teddy's belly here. with this tool and you see it, it gives it a nice warm uh, like a nice fuzzy texture it's it's uh it's actually a charcoal or sorry charcoal uh texture gives it a nice flow there and we'll do the same with the legs here fill them in and because we got such a nice firm line too we don't need to get too too overly fancy with the, this coloring in, but we can, we can, we can t go nuts with it. And I'm going to probably, you know, I, I really like the effect I'm getting with this tool. As a matter of fact, I'm, it's giving me some ideas of how to make it better. But anyway, we will take it this far. Lots of fun. This, this part is the fun part. This is the part where, as an artist, as a cartoonist, you can just um, have fun. Let the tool do make the magic. It's magic, really, to watch it happen with your pencil. Just let it. You, you kind of guide it in a way, but it, it's really creating something really special here. Do these ears as well. I could see this being something that you could use in a children's book or something. Or, um, and you, again, as I said, you don't have to go right to the edge. You can imagine that it's uh, backlit. There's something in the back of it there. It doesn't have to be uh, right to the edge. If you want to, though, you can. That's uh, the beauty of it is that it looks really good that way. But you could just take it right to the edge, too, and really make it look good. See, we're, we're doing it with this here in the ears. And for the nose here, we could make it kind of a cream color. Let's take it uh, what's a nice cream color here. Even lighter yellow than I think we had there. And just go to uh, the values here. And we could even lighten that up a bit more. Let's try that for the nose. for the hands inside of the ears here he could just do that amp that down a bit move that over here fun stuff wow And a quite angry Teddy. And an unhappy Teddy. <laughs> okay. There we go. So there's our two Teddy bears. And we could even... Check an upper tool a bit again. This, uh, the opacity would, could be a little brighter here. Again, we're just giving a little extra feel here.
Okay, there's what there's the overall of this teddy, and you see how it gives a nice 3D feel to it. It's not 3D, of course, but it, because of the way we've put the colors in, it's given that nice kind of dimensional texture, which you want to have, uh, which which is nice to have in your in your drawings. It's, it's nice with this tool that you can do that. Okay, let's stay on this layer, and maybe we'll make this this teddy with a slightly different texture. Maybe make him a little. Maybe a little different color of brown. Let's take some of the blue off here. Yeah, let's just give them a little, a little browner. It's not quite as red, but it'll be a little more brownish. And we'll just amp that opacity down a bit. And here we go. We've got a, a nice look for Teddy on the left side as well. And because the bottom part of his head is closer to the ground and it's not got that ceiling light coming on it, it's um, it's a little lower across the bottom of his face. That we don't have to worry too much about that if it's darker down there. Actually, it looks better that way. So we'll keep going with that. We'll expand our brush here just to... Because there's a fair expanse here in this part of the teddy bear. So that, I'm sure after doing this, you'll never look at teddy bears the same again. You'll have a lot of fun looking at your teddy bear and saying, yeah, that's the way Jeff Wilson drew it in his class. That'll be fun. And there's our two teddy bears. A lot of fun there to, to uh, create that with the color. And uh, let's see. What, one thing about teddy bears is sometimes they have uh, colored bellies. We could take this gold here and using the same textured look, we could um, create kind of a golden belly for Teddy. And it could go right. I think it would look funny if we only took it down to about here <laughs> and the rest of it, the brown. I think that would be fun. And we could do the same with this teddy. We could just have a nice light orange, uh, like a yellow belly here. Yellow belly. Do something like that around his eyes. Put in little details like that. Could be a lot of fun. Even around his mouth here, you could... Put a little detail around his mouth here. And if you wanted to, you could put an eyebrow on him as well. A couple little details like that would be a lot of fun. With this one, you might want to even make it uh, some darker ones. You could give him some darker eyes here. He's like the anti little teddy bear. You could even fill in his nose here and make it darker. And then maybe have the yellow here for <laughs> there we go. All the little details you can add to make it so much fun. So there you go, our, our two teddy bears with their colors all colored in. Okay, let's uh, let's go to one of the other ones and uh, that we've done today. Let's take that right off there. No more of that one. This one of the dinosaur, or we could do the one of the uh, elephant and the thumbtack. That might be actually a, a little more fun to do. I'm just going to take the uh, layer here and move it up a bit. So we can get some work on it there. So this is like a very interesting thing to do. So we're going to do a, an outline of this as well. And we've what we've done, so we create a new layer for that. And again, we take our color tool and we will go back to the palettes. And I think I've already pre-created a, 
um, black here. And we're going to go back to the inking tool and the studio pen. So we're going to go back here to my old trusty studio pen tool for the line on this one. So we're going to do the, um, the thumbtack first. And I need to find how thick the line will be. And luckily I have my undo tool here at the lower left side. The one that uh, goes, starts right, turns left. One that starts left and turns right is the undo tool, which is, or sorry, the redo tool, which is great to have too. So we're going to start with that, create a line here. And again, if we hold it after we make the line from point A to point B, if we hold it, it will straighten out and become a straight line. Wow. And the same with this curve line here for the thumbtack uh, curve. It will become a, uh, except it didn't, but that's okay. It's not a perfect line. It's not a perfect uh, thing. That's okay. We'll, we'll live with that. Let, let's try it though. There we go. It, it did make the, the oval shape, which is great. Okay, let's go to our elephant now. And we're going to do a similar thing with that. We're just going to make the shape here of the uh, trunk. A couple black dots for the eyes. And of course, yeah, we'll come back and do the details of the trunk later. But for now, we're just going to do a nice solid thick black outline for our elephant character here. And uh, so I'm going to amp down that uh, tool a bit. So we're going to spend more time with this elephant, which has a few more details than perhaps than the, uh, the, the, uh, the other thing, the thumbtack. We're just going to have a little bit of fun with the details here. These, of course, he'll have wrinkles on his knees. The elephants will. And uh, just amp it up a bit here. And we will take our eraser tool and kind of clean up a couple of the lines we did, like here on the tail. I think I had a little bit of a line I wasn't happy with up here. But anyway, that's okay. So there we go. We have our lines here. Again, we uh, take our uh, obscure that layer two, which had the uh, blue outline, the blue sketch line, and we have a nice solid black outline here. So we've got a couple of different textures here, a different, a couple of different uh, types of objects. It's not the same thing. A thumbtack is much different than a um, than an elephant. It might be a similar color but it's a different, um, it's made of metal. So metal has to be, we can you show that in color too. And that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show the difference between um, an animal creature. Here, I'll just put it in there just below the black line here. So this is what I do. I put the black line and then I do the second layer is the coloring line that I do underneath. So that's what we're going to do now, use the coloring line. And using some similar colors, I'm going to color in. Let's use some different textures here, too. I'm going to use the, the spray paints because it's, it gives you a nice, um, not spray paint, sorry, the uh, airbrushing. Airbrushing, it gives you a nice, solid, uh, very even texture as you do it. It's something that um, can give the, the effect of metal. And uh, so if, if I'm doing it, I want to make sure that I'm trying to show the texture of metal here, which is um, shiny and um, hard, I guess you would say. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of do what we did with the others. We had a bit of an outline here, and then I'll take my eraser tool and I'm going to just erase around a couple of areas here, like just in this part here. And you notice the line is pretty sharp, pretty strong, and that's 
it's a show metal too because it uh, it's shiny and yet it it shows it's very reflective it shows things very uh, clearly and we'll take uh, let's go to it's also reflective as i say so we can take other colors too we can take say this um very um kind of a green here so it could be reflecting something green here so we just sorry just um had that here in, in places and it, it doesn't have to be really overpowering it just has to kind of show that that's reflecting it a bit and we can take a, another color like um like a blue show that too so it gives it kind of a metal look another thing would be to have some dots like a flashlight uh, and you can do that with the uh, ink tool here and bring up your opacity and take down your size here. And you could just have, um, make that a bit bigger. And, you can, and then you can sort of uh, increase your opacity tool and, uh, a little better. So that gives it kind of a metal, metallic look there. Now with our elephant, he's he's got um, kind of a gray skin. So we're going to start that with that as our base. And we're going to put a texture in it as well. I think with the charcoal, I really like that for the teddy bear, but I'm kind of looking for something a little rougher a little sharper a little more um here's some one with rough skin this is in the uh, materials library here i'm going to try that i'm going to amp up the um the brush size here and we're going to Again, do the same type of coloring that we did inside the uh, teddy bear's characters. And we're going to do it with this elephant. Same concept. We're going to just kind of color in the center. And then we're going to uh, fill it in where we can, as close as we can. We don't have to go right to the edge. We can leave it light on the outside. I think it, it makes it look fun to do that. Of course, everybody has their own preferences. If you want to fill in all the lines, you can certainly do that. And uh, just uh, take that down a bit. I think I'm just going to go to the values here and I'm going to reduce the light on this. And take it down get 25% uh, and do some of the stuff at the top here. I could even lighten it up more than that. That's, let's even do that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I could really lighten that up a lot more. And have fun with that at the top there. And there you go. You got your elephant here. A different uh, texture. See how we have the metal metallic texture here of our thumbtack and we have the very rough skin texture of our elephant. And if we take it even a little deeper, we can make it a, a full black here. And, and then um, using our texture tool and our opacity tool, just, just do the lower parts of the uh, trunk here. I'm going to have to increase the opacity a bit here, I think. Let's take it a little over 50%. There we go. We're getting a bit of a effect now. And, of course, this is just at the bottom where the light would not be as strong. And we can fill in a few of the details there where the light would not be showing as much. That would be here in the elephant's tummy and maybe this part of the, uh, the body in here. 
and you see all the while it's giving it this nice um, texture with the line, the kind of the oily rough skin look too. Oh yeah, let's put it in a bit of his face as well, a bit of his ear. <laughs> and I think I'll just take it down and maybe do a bit of the tail, just just because it, um, it would be quite out of the light there. And there you go. You've got your elephant there. And you can, using the same tool and maybe using the white color, you can, uh, let's amp down our brush tool. We can do things like show his uh, wrinkles in his knees and his kneecaps and show how light would from the top would be coming down and playing in there. That would be, a, that makes it a lot of fun. Let's damp that up a bit. Okay, you see how that looks? And you can do this trunk as well. Some lines here to uh, just give it a little bit of, um, and around his eyes if you wanted to. There you go. We'll do this last uh, wrinkle here in his, in his back leg here. There we go. I don't think I like that line. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, I can undo it if I didn't uh, like it. And there you go. So there, that's a nice texture for this character. That is very simple to do on, in, um, on um, Pro Procreate. And then here we have the thumbtack, which is very different uh, texture as well. And a kind of a metallic look, if you will, too. So that's a couple of uh, tip, tips for the um, for, for colors. Um, let's go back to... Yeah, let's... Uh, let's not do that one again. Let's have a look at how our color section looks underneath that you know it's almost told the story there on its own you've almost drawn the picture there uh without the line which is fantastic i think that's just great um if, to be able to do that but of course with the black line it does it does help to it's it just ba basically accentuating the black line but it is always for me it's always neat to look at how the uh the black line We'll do the same thing with the teddy bears here. Whoa. I mean, I think we've got on that one layer, you've got the look here. So it's almost like looking at it by blurring your eyes or something. You uh, you can see the a lot of the details, but it's missing a few of them too. And that's neat here. And, and of course, yeah, that just on its own, it's almost a, a perfect drawing too. But then you add the black line to it. And uh, again... With the color, it, it really gives it a, a three-dimensional look to it. And, uh, and and back to the original concept, we talked about the um, the big versus the little. The big teddy bear versus the little teddy bear. Um, the difference in the, in the proportions, like the, the smaller head and the... Sorry, the bigger head and the smaller body makes a, a character look small. On the left side here, the bigger body and the smaller head makes a character look big. So that's a, a little rule that you can take um, with you to, if you want to draw something big, make the head look small and make the body look big. If you want to draw something that looks small and cute and tiny, then you make the head smaller, or sorry, you make the head bigger and you make the body smaller. So that's... Uh, um, I, I had fun doing that. I hope you did too. Um, and uh, I think I will see if uh, I, I can uh, go back and review all this again. The original drawing we had was the, um, the big versus the small way back here. The ant and the, the globe. And uh, the, the whole idea being that it, it, it doesn't look right together, so it can be funny. You can play with that idea and make, make a gag out of it or make, make a cartoon out of it that could be quite funny. And uh, just um, 
in general for writing, it's a good rule of thumb to things that don't um, make sense together, uh, things that are out of, um, you know, the lack of logic, I guess. But anything ironic, ironic is a, is a good source of humor too. So it's uh, just a couple of rules of thumbs that you can take with you to to create cartoons and cartooning. And uh, I think with that, um, I don't know if we have. Doesn't look like we have anybody else here, eh, Tom? So um, I, maybe I'll turn it over to you, or um, I can continue going. Hey, Jeff. Uh... Hey Jeff, yeah, yeah, I got uh, I got me here. So, um, yeah, no, that's, that's uh, fantastic, Jeff. I'm gonna just, uh, okay, fantastic. Have my mic off, off here. here. Perfect. I just wanted to, uh, um, yeah, uh, just remind everyone. I've just been putting all the workshops on it, so I've just been running back and forth. So we have our next one uh, uh, set up for February. Uh, so I just wanted to remind everyone that you can uh, you can uh, join us again. Uh, in, that, in that next session. So that's all up on our website now. So if you go to tbmcs.ca, you'll find it, all the information on the website there. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back to, I'll just put it back to Jeff here if you want to um, do a final outro here. And uh, here's, let me put it back to you, then, then I'll finish up. Here we go. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you so much, Tom. Well, uh, yeah, the, the, it's a fun, uh, fun thing to do in cartooning to... Um, to make things different than they are. Like if, if you're doing a cartoon about a monster, um, the monsters are usually scary to people. So if you can create a cartoon about a monster that everybody likes or nobody notices and is kind of uh, insecure and is just kind of a wimpy guy, um, that could be, that could be a hit cartoon. I, I, I would say anything that, that starts as being something, but becomes its opposite that can be fun for a reader and for a cartoonist. So for example, the teddy bear here, that could be a fun character. The, 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 um, the monster teddy bear, which is the teddy bear, of course, is equated with, you know, we, in cartooning, we deal with stereotypes. So the teddy bear is a stereotype of the cutesy, harmless, um, benevolent creature that isn't, isn't a lot. I can't hurt anybody, <laughs> but then you've, we could create this big giant teddy bear that, you know, hugs people, <laughs> hugs people to into the hospital or something. It, it's, it could be, it could be fun. It would be very silly, but that's, uh, that is our stock and trade in the cartooning world is, is to bring the silly in and, uh, and, you know, the change basically change what our sense of reality by introducing something that probably couldn't happen and shouldn't happen. The really sad part is when we <laughs> create something that does happen and that, and you know, if a teddy bear, you know, if I created a teddy bear in a comic strip and, and I heard tomorrow in the newspaper that a real teddy bear, uh, or, you know, came out of the, <laughs> came out of somebody's house in Toronto and destroyed the city. I, I wouldn't be very happy, but you hope you've got something that you that will not happen in real life, and that that is the goal. But unfortunately, you could create something that would that could really happen. I don't think this is a danger of that happening. So anyway, just to realize that the in, ridiculously silly and and improbable is uh, is a lot of fun in cartooning, and that's um, that's something I really uh, encourage you to explore in your cartooning is the the things that. Um, that are ironic and are fun, especially. So uh, I, having said that, I will uh, pass it on to Tom. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, uh, you know, going back to like some of the superhero uh, uh, workshops that we've been doing too, is that, that kind of underdog hero, right? And, and that uh, the playing around with that. So the, the, un, the you, you know, the, the, pe the people you wouldn't suspect being superheroes, you know, going back to like the Superman and the, and this and stuff, right? Like the kind of the, the underdog or the, or the um, you, would, you know, the people, the characters you don't suspect and then playing around with that. So it kind of continues that theme of, of playing with expectations, right? And, and flipping them around. So, and that's the, I, and, I, and, and I think that the, the imagination is just, you know, that's the whole thing is our imaginations are, are so, 
uh, amazing and and powerful, right? So it's uh, so so really really put that on paper. I think that's what, what we could really see what what could happen today with today's workshop. So thanks again, Jeff. Um, I'm just gonna thank all our partners uh, on this project. So we have. Uh, the uh, Canada Council for the Arts, and then we have our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. And as I said, February workshop is up, so please register. We want to see you there again, so please join us for that. The online workshop will have these uh, once a month. It's just rotating a little bit based on some of the statutory holidays. So the February one, I think, I believe is February 5th. It's pretty early in February, and then we'll be back to kind of the same time in March. Um, and then uh, again, reminder, iPads, check out the iPads available at our library partners. If you have a library membership at any of these three libraries, you can take out iPads. Wasaga Beach's uh, iPad is coming soon, so just stay tuned for that. We'll announce that. But do check out the equipment. It's there. So if you don't have an iPad or Apple Pencil and Procreate, just go and take it out and uh, enjoy and, and do it in the comfort of your home or a park or, or a cottage or anywhere that, that you are. So that would be great. So thanks again for joining us and uh, we'll see you again next session. All the best.